Right. So, I, I mean, I think what we have to do, and of course, you know, I have to say as a representative of the university, you know, that, I mean, we have to keep working to make the science better. I think that goes without saying. Um, but at the same time, I think we, ha we have to know what, not just what we know and what we don't know, but the different degrees to which we know and don't know things, and make the decisions that are based on the the best knowledge that we have. We don't, we're not going to take radical steps based on the most uncertain predictions. But right now, when it comes to uh, climate change, we're so far from doing the things we need to do that even though the uncertainties are very serious, there's no chance that we're overreacting. So until there is a chance that we're overreacting, you know, we really don't have to worry about that. I mean, and I think and that's when it comes to mitigation. So when it comes to reducing, mitigation is the word we use in the climate community for emitting less greenhouse gases. That's, that's the proactive thing we can do to slow climate change. We can't stop it because some is already, we're already committed to some because the carbon we've already emitted is taking a while to, for its warming to play out. But we can slow it by emitting less carbon. And that, um, we know enough about the climate system to know that we should be taking stronger action there. And, and that really, Everybody but the most anti-science, you know, people who are un totally unresponsive to evidence, everybody can agree on that. What we can't agree on is who should do what about it. But, you know, when it comes to adaptation, which means dealing with the climate change that's already happened or that we know is going to happen, uh, the uncertainties also only become a problem after a point. Because in many ways, we're not adapted to the climate that we already have. So the California drought is a perfect example of this. The, um, the wa even if there were no climate change, California should have a more rational water system. Um, they would be drought prone anyway. Similarly with New York City, Sandy could have happened without climate change. Eight, eight inches of sea level rise, you know, maybe that's $2 billion, but that leaves another $58 billion that we would have had anyway. And so, you know, we knew the city was vulnerable. We built in all these low-lying places. We should decide not to do some of those things anyway. Now, there will come a point, some of the measures the city's taking now, I mean, the city's doing a lot of things now uh, to adapt. Um, but Bloomberg said in his last days, and de Blasio's keeping up this policy, we won't, won't retreat from the waterfront. Well, someday we may have to retreat from the waterfront after enough sea level rise. But, so there will become a point at which the, the uncertainties in the climate change projection will be really consequential for knowing what actions to take. But in many cases, we haven't reached that point yet. So that I think the, the, our knowledge of the science, both of climate change and of all the other ways that the way we're living is not sustainable, which would be there anyway, you know, we, we, there are many what we call no regrets measures when it comes to adaptation. And so I think I, there, you know, there's a lot we don't know and, we, and there's a lot of decisions that would, could be better informed if, you know, the science were a little bit better. And so there's a lot of mileage to be gained in, in the work that we do. But at the same time, for policy, I think, in many cases, our scientific knowledge is actually not the limiting factor. The limiting factor is politics and economics. And the science is good enough, in many cases, if we would listen to it, to tell us what to do.